How's it going guys? Hope you've been well on this episode of Tricked Out. We're talking about my Tricked Out M&P M2.0 Compact. Oh, how about I just do what I want to do? I'm just going to be shooting though. Just That's fine. Just keep going. All right, so I'm just gonna be sitting here talking, probably showing kind of close-up details of this gun as I talk. It's not gonna be a review of the M&P M2.0 by any means, though I did kind of do a review comparison of the M2.0 Compact versus the Gen 5 Glock 19. So if you're interested in that, it's on my channel, go check it out. This, I'm just kind of talking about the mods that I've had done to it, who did them, why I did them, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. And yeah, that's gonna be the format of this video. The M2.0s already have a very aggressive texture on the grips, uh, so I didn't feel the need to stipple this gun myself or send it off and get it stippled, anything like that. So I'm just keeping the stock texture. However, it's actually too aggressive. Like, I love the feel in hand. It feels really good in hand. I'm gonna go ahead and put a mag here. Empty mag, gun is cleared as well, if you're wondering but it's too aggressive to carry. So I carried this gun for a while just to do it, just to test out holsters. I make and sell holsters. So here's one. This is the M and P with the integrated kind of claw here with the extra mag. Uh, I won't talk about it too much, but I do make holsters if you're wondering. I make them for the M and P with the TLR7 with the Olight PL Mini and with the APL-C right now. Those are the most popular requests, so those are the holsters that I'm making for the M&P M2.0. Anyway, so I carried the gun for a while. I found that this part that touches my belly was too aggressive. So it's, can't really tell in video, but what I did was sandpaper this down uh, to kind of knock the texture down a little bit, and now it's kind of a velvety type feel. Uh, that's kind of what happens when you saw when you sand down uh, plastic that's kind of sticking up. So I don't know if you can tell the difference. Let me grab another M2.0 here and see. I don't know if you can tell on camera. Anyway, sanded this side down so it wasn't rubbing my stomach raw, and that's it. That's all I felt that I needed to do to the grip as far as modifications. Uh, really, just take that down a little bit. Next up, I guess we have the trigger here. This is an apex tactical flat-faced trigger. A lot of people call this the flatty. They have another model, which is kind of a little bit curved. Anyway, the thing that I didn't like about the M&P was the stock trigger here that kind of has this hinge point in it, and it's just kind of not an awesome thing overall. I didn't love the feel of it. Uh, again, it's okay, it's not a horrible trigger, but I just wanted one of these. I've always kind of wanted one of these. They're kind of, Apex is kind of famous for their M&P triggers, and I've never really had an M&P that I wanted to trick out, and I finally did. So Apex trigger in this guy, flat face trigger, I love it. Uh, it cleans up the trigger a little bit. So you can see here, comes to a nice crisp, well a nice, wall here and has a nice crisp break with hardly any over travel. Oops. The reset is quite short. 
nice brake, hardly any over travel. Really an awesome trigger, feels really nice, has this little trigger safety that goes all the way flush, and overall just a really nice feeling, nice looking trigger. So if you're looking for a trigger upgrade, uh, the other thing it does is put the face of the trigger more far forward so there's a longer length of pull. Uh, a lot of people have complaints that this distance on the M&P from here to here is a little too short and they would rather, sh they would rather elongate that so that way when their uh, finger is in here, it's not wrapped around so much, you see? So anyways, the flat face trigger does help in a lot of areas. The M&P M2.0 trigger is already, I think, a very, very good trigger. Even the stock trigger here. Again, this isn't a review of the M&P, but while we have it here, I'll just kind of talk about it. Nice wall, doesn't have a ton of over travel as is, and the reset isn't awesome, but it's, it's pretty, pretty good. So the apex cleans that up a little bit, makes it a little bit better, uh, makes the face a little better, and yeah, whatever, we're done talking about that. The next modification I had done was this slide milling. So made kind of more aggressive slide cuts here in the back, obviously added these cuts, added some top serrations as well, put the RMR in here. Uh, we have Ameriglow suppressor height sights and an RM06, I believe, is this model on this gun. Hmm, doesn't actually say it anywhere. Anyway, I think this is the RM06, if you're wondering, adjustable LED RMR with suppressor sights that are just high enough to co-witness on top of it. This slide milling was done by Innovative Gunfighter Solutions. This is called the Stealth Package, as you can see, they engraved it here on the side. And it also has this, kind of hard to see, this little weird beveled edge here. Uh, and now different to most beveled edges, it's not like, it's not beveled like this. It's actually like a 90 degree cut in, so to speak. I don't know how well you can tell in video, but that's what it looks like. So this up front is for, you could use them for press checks obviously. I rack my slide like this a lot, so I run a gun oftentimes if I need to rack the slide and I'm not clearing some kind of stovepipe malfunction where I'm gonna go over the top, a lot of times the fastest way to do that for me is like this. Just break my grip a little bit, back in action. So that's what that helps with. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see here, my thumb here, I ripped my thumb open, I think it was two weeks ago, so my thumb's pretty much healed by now, but all that to say, these serrations right here are quite sharp. Uh, when I first got it, I noticed that and I was like, ooh, this is nice, this is really aggressive, this feels good, it's a little sharp. So these are obviously pretty sharp, but really the sharp part is this top corner right here. Um, and it's not sharp enough to where, you know, I'm running my finger, I'm putting pretty good pressure on it. I didn't think it would be an issue, so I wasn't really worried about it, but when I went here, and just did a fast over the top. I actually have it on video. I'll see if I can roll it in here. You can't really see much of it on video uh, because it's kind of zoomed out and it's not like a close up of what happened. But you can see the act in which it happened. And it was when I was going on an over the top slide, my thumb caught the edge here and ripped some of my skin off. It was bleeding pretty good. So that's my only complaint with the gun really is just this part right here is just a little bit too sharp. Now, is it too sharp? I cut myself, so it's kind of, I would say obviously it is too sharp, but at the same time, I'm used to running my Glock, so it has pretty smooth edges, so I just put a lot of force on there and just rip it back. Uh, and if this was my primary gun, and if this was the gun I trained in, and, and I knew the amount of pressure I needed to put when I was racking the slide, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Maybe it would have been fine. I have fairly tough hands, you know. I, 
I, I lift weights, I, I work on holsters, obviously. I'm doing a lot of wood type projects. I'm, I'm doing stuff, I live in the mountains, I'm doing stuff around my house. So I don't have like little delicate skin or anything like that. They're pretty, they're pretty meaty, you know, working man's hands kind of. So for it to cut my thumb open, take that for what it is. Uh, that's the main thing. I haven't actually talked to Innovative Gunfighter Solutions about it, but I may bring it to their attention. Maybe they already know. Maybe it's not really an issue for most people. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's my only complaint really about this whole gun. Innovative Gunfighter Solutions also did nitride the slide, so it's a really nice looking black finish there. Uh, it did come with a RMR plate cover, but I'm running an RMR obviously, so I don't have the cover. I left all of the other stocks internal, stock barrel, stock springs, everything, aside from basically changing out the trigger, which for the M&Ps is a little more involved than a Glock, but still not too bad. That's all I did. This is it, this is the gun. I like it a lot. I think next pistol I'm gonna talk about probably is my P10C. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what else to talk about. This, the pistols are pretty, pretty straightforward, the modifications on them, but people have been wanting to, me to make a video on this for a long time. Well, not a long time, but Ever since I got it back and people saw pictures of it on Instagram, they've been asking about it. Speaking of which, if you don't follow me on Instagram, go uh, at Last Line of Defense. If you're on Instagram, I post a lot of photos. So you're gonna see a lot of my gear on Instagram before you'll see it over here on YouTube in a video. I do polls and stuff on Instagram too. Also follow my Facebook page. Those are all linked down in the video description. And I think my channel page and all that stuff. Uh, Facebook again, I'm just gonna kind of rehash this. I use Facebook a lot of times to post like coupons and deals and sales and stuff like that. And then Instagram I kind of use for polls and obviously just to post pictures of what I have going on, my life, truck, hiking, guns, obviously, anything like that. So if you're into any of those things, go check out my other social media accounts. Also, always in the video descriptions below, I link to what I talk about in the video. I always link to my coupon codes that I have down there, so I have coupon codes for you guys too. So before you buy anything, check out my video description, click the links down there, use the coupon codes, and yeah. Until next time, guys, take care.